our Griffiths quantum mechanics book. The second edition is out. If you have the first edition, that's probably fine, but you should probably find someone who has a second edition to compare what the differences are. In particular, if I were to assign a homework problem from this book, it may not be the exact same number as in the first edition. The second book is Introduction to Solid-State Physics by Cattell. The eighth edition is out. Some of you may have the seventh or the sixth or the second edition, depending upon where you got your copy. Again, you'd want to compare someone who has the eighth edition to see if there's where the changes are, in particular with the homework problems. All these books are also on reserve in the library, so you could go there to check uh, if necessary. If we move on to the next sheet, uh, which are the course policies, uh, communication is done via the web page, and I'll be going through the web page in a minute. This is on the course management system, also known as Blackboard. There's also a link to this page from my research group's web page, and I put that address here, so you should be able to find it. Um, you can also contact us, us being the course instructors, me, Nathan, and Dave, by email or in class uh, to schedule individual appointments or, of course, come to office hours. There's homework assignments, roughly one per week. You'll see it's a little less than that. There are six throughout the quarter, and it's a 10 week quarter. Um, because the quarter is short at Northwestern, we cannot accept late homework because if you fall behind, there's no catching up, basically. So you need to turn your homework in in class on the days that it's due on the syllabus. The homework sets and then the solutions after uh, you guys have turned them in will be posted so you can view the solutions online. Collaboration on homework is allowed and encouraged if you're someone who learns better in a group environment. However, uh, you each need to submit a copy of the homework solutions in your own handwriting. So you shouldn't take the assignment, split it up into parts, of it and then photocopy it and staple it together. You should each actually write it out, but if you want to collaborate in, in determining the solution, that's of course allowed. But please list your collaborators at the top of the homework assignment so we know what collaboration is occurring and there's no suspicion of uh, any untoward activity. Exams, there's two exams, a midterm and a final. On the midterm, you'll be allowed a calculator, a ruler, and one 8.5 by 11 sheet of notes. You can write on both sides as small as you want. Uh, there's reasons why I do this, and I'll come back to that later on when the exams show up. For the final, you get two sheets of these notes. I would recommend you take the sheet from the first exam and then create a second one for the second half of the course. Bring those both to the final exam. There may or may not be review sessions. If we get ahead, we'll just have the review sessions in class. If we need more time or there's enough interest, we can have sessions the night before, or a couple nights before the exams. I already talked about grades. Textbooks. The last concern which many students have about this course, in particular, in many of the graduate level courses in our department, is the level of mathematics which is required and expected of you. With that said, I'm recommending strongly, if you have any concern, to get a couple of these Shams outline books. They literally cost eight or nine bucks on Amazon. I've listed them uh, on this course policies sheet. Basically, how I think about these is it's like if, you're, if you speak Spanish or you learn Spanish in high school and then you go to Spain to actually speak it, you're probably going to bring with you a phrase book and a Spanish-English dictionary to help you through because now everything's fresh in your mind. These handbooks are similar. You probably have had multivariable calculus, differential equations, vector calculus in the past, but it may not be fresh in your mind. These books will point you in the direction of exactly what identity you will need for a particular problem. So that's one way to deal with this uh, lack of, of mathematics on the tip of your tongue. That's just a piece of advice. None of this is required, of course. In addition, I've put 10 books on reserve. That's the next sheet. Uh, you can read these as well as I can. Uh, they're in the engineering library. Hopefully all of you have figured out where the engineering library is. It's directly north of Cook Hall. Uh, the engineering library has these books, and there are books which I find to be relevant to this course. So if you're having trouble with a particular concept, for example, phonons, you may want to go to a different book if Cattell doesn't do a good job in your opinion of explaining that concept. The last sheet is the syllabus. Uh, the syllabus lists uh, many useful things, including when the office hours are. I already mentioned mine are Wednesdays, 2 to 4. Or, of course, you can schedule an appointment with me if that time doesn't work. Dave Comstock's office hours are Thursdays, 10 to 12. 
And his office hours will be held in 2068 Cook Hall, which is Material Science and Engineering Teaching Lab. Uh, I think most of you probably know where that is. Nathan Yoder's office hours are Fridays 2 to 4 in the same location, 20, 2068 Cook Hall, the Material Science and Engineering Teaching Lab. Incidentally, if my office hours become very popular and we can't accommodate the number of students that show up in my office, then we'll move up to the teaching lab as well. So go there if I'm not in my office during office hours. I mentioned the grading, the textbooks. Here you can see the specific topics and when the homeworks are due. You see that there's six due dates for the homework. The exam will occur on two days, and this is kind of unusual. Uh, in the past, I've had many complaints that my exams are too long or there's not enough time for the exam. One way to deal with that is to schedule, let's say, a two-hour session at night and give you a one-hour exam two time period, but that becomes problematic with schedules. So what I've done is given you two days to do the first exam. We'll do them both in class. And what I'll do is split the exam in half, and you'll do the first half on day one and the second half on day two. Uh, this means that you'll have an hour to do a half hour, what I would deem to be a half hour's long exam. So hopefully time will not be an issue in that case. it will also give you a chance to take a break, I suppose, halfway through the exam and, and regroup. Um, if you look at the topics, the first half of the course is basically covering the Schrodinger equation and introductory quantum theory. That includes the Schrodinger equation in one dimension, Schrodinger equation in three dimensions, and then approximation methods, including perturbation theory and variational principle. Then we'll have the first exam, which will basically cover quantum mechanics. The second half of the course covers solid state physics. We'll begin with the simplest theory of solid state physics, which is free electron theory. We'll then establish that free electron theory is uh, inherently flawed and does not include many other concepts which are important for solids, including phonons, including band structure. And once we know those three concepts, we'll talk specifically about semiconductors, which are an interesting case uh, which we'll study in this course. You'll see that there's absolutely no class during Thanksgiving week, so that whole week is off. Uh, and there's other dates which are canceled, which are listed here. The final exam will be in this room on December 7th, which is our scheduled time. I'm starting the exam one hour early at 8 to 11, so you have plenty of time to do the exam. It'll not only be a two-hour exam, but you'll have three hours to do it. Any questions on anything? Okay. The last bureaucratic detail I want to cover is the course webpage. I think many of you have seen these Blackboard web pages before. Basically, all the action is on the left-hand side here. If you want in the course information, you can see everything I just handed out to you. Staff information has our information, how to contact us, when our office hours are, et cetera. Course documents have all the lecture notes. So for example, you could download today's lecture notes if you want. I'll try my best to keep these updated and preferably loaded before class. You can print them out before class. I can't promise that'll happen every time, but I'll, I'll try my best. The assignments will be listed here. Obviously, there's not in there yet, but homework one will be there and the solutions after uh, you've turned them in. Finally, uh, external links. The only external link I have right now is to Material Science and Engineering 351.1, which takes you to this NCLT webpage. And if you click here, you'll get into the course. And you need to understand or realize that the course materials are up here in the upper right-hand corner. So if you click there, then you can go in and say go to week two of that course, get the lecture notes, and then download the videos if you want. Everything's there. In addition, the homework assignments are there as well. So if you feel weak on a particular topic we're covering in class, you felt like your undergraduate training was not sufficient, you could go here, learn at least how I teach the undergraduate version, um, and then hopefully catch up uh, with the rest of the class. Okay. All right, any other questions, or any questions any of you have? All right, either I'm being very clear or uh, you're a little shy, I'm not sure which. But what I'll say is uh, throughout the course, I encourage questions, I hope you'll ask them if I'm being unclear. Uh, if I'm not getting questions, then I'll assume I'm going too slowly and I'll start to pick up the pace. So if you feel like I'm going too quickly, just ask a question and you'll slow me down. <laughs> okay. Another thing that I, I tend to do is utilize the Blackboard 
for a course like this. Uh, students 